everyone and welcome to the our new discussion which we are going to have about Thais equation and example of superposition for the solution. Though we have already discussed Thais equation and Thaim equation, but just to bring a in the background and in perspective first very briefly we will see both the equations and then what are the limitations and other things also here. So, let us start as we know that the in 1935 the hydrologist uh, C. V. Thais of USGS developed a, a equation which is applicable under non-steady conditions because uh, getting information in steady conditions is much easier but uh, getting you know hydraulic characteristics of an aquifer in non-steady conditions is challenging. So, though way back the Thais developed this equation which we have already seen that S stored to T R and T equal to Q W U upon 4 pi T. And uh, prior to this development of Thais equation, the Thaim equation also was providing practically means of analyzing drawdown produced by discharging well. And uh, you know that the time equation we have already discussed in our previous discussion, it can be written that q equal to 2 pi b k and uh, b is the you know thickness, k is the hydraulic conductivity and uh, h 2 minus uh, h that is the height difference between two observing wells and divided by log r 2 oblique r 1. So, Thais equation and Thaim equation. Now, as we know that the Thaim equation is only usable in steady shape conditions and uh, therefore, it is difficult to implement when observation wells are at far distance from the well on which the pumping test is being done. And uh, you know in real ground situations many times observation wells are not in uh, close by of the, uh, the well which is being used for. Uh, pumping or finding out the characteristics of an aquifer. So, therefore, uh, this uh, time equation uh, becomes unusable. So, in that situation uh, it uh, poses a uh, limitations or severe limitations uh, for many types of aquifers, especially those uh, aquifers which are having uh, large storage coefficients. And that means that it requires a long pumping period to develop a steady shape conditions. Now, if an aquifer is having uh, as we see here uh, that if uh, it is having large storage coefficient and can happen many times then uh, especially in sedimentary uh, rock formations and uh, then uh, you require a, a very long time period maybe many days together to achieve a steady shape condition. So, that uh, that kind of requirement is with this uh, a time equation is having. Now, whereas the Thais equation is uh, discussed just now that it is for the non equilibrium also called a non equilibrium equation, uh, equation that means we can also apply for uh, non steady uh, conditions. So, this is written like h 2 minus h equal to q upon 4 pi t and integration u to infinity e power minus u du upon u, where u which we are taking here is a r square upon s that is storivity and the distance or you can say radius of a cone of depression divided by 4 capital T and small t. So, we know that in h 2 minus h 1 as the drawdown at any point in the vicinity of a well discharging well at a constant rate and q is of course, the discharge of the well t is the transmissibility. Similarly, we are having another equation in a, a more a brief manner that a h 0 minus h uh, can be written as q w u and divided by 4 pi t. So, in this way the equation can also be written and uh, so, uh, where we have already discussed that uh, u stands for r square s upon 4 T T. Now, uh, this uh, W U which we have uh, discussed in the previous uh, uh, equation uh, that can be written as 0 0.572 minus log uh, E U plus U minus U square and like this series. 
So, R of course is the distance from the discharging well, S is the storage coefficient and T is the time since pumping started. So, when we put all these uh, values and uh, we get uh, information about and uh, how much drawdown has occurred because drawdown cannot be seen. So, only it has to be estimated. So, the coefficient of uh, transmissibility and storage uh, cannot be determined directly from equation 1 which is given here which we have also seen just previously. Uh, because uh, T that is transmissibility occurs both in the argument of the function and, and as a divisor or the exponential integral. And therefore, uh, we can write a, a little different uh, way as just uh, seen previously that uh, the first equation which we have discussed the storability equal to Q upon 4 pi T and then and uh, U also we have written. So, now this uh, can be written as S equal to Q 4 pi T and then uh, minus uh, 0 0.5772 minus log E U and uh, this series. So, this equation can be simplified as shown in the equation 4 that is store T equal to Q upon 4 pi T and multiply by W U. So, in this way we can simplify this equation. Now, you know the Thais equation devised a graphical method as earlier also we have seen that there are graphical methods which makes uh, uh, easy or possible to obtain solution of the equations. And uh, because we are having while pumping is being done we are having only limited data. So, based on that limited data we can have a graphical method to find out hydraulic characteristics of an aquifer. So, here we are having plotting u here and storativity is getting plotted here and then we what we try to see the matching points which are there and on this axis we are having r square divided by t and on, on the other y axis we are having on the right hand side we are having u w. So, by this uh, uh, graphical method uh, it becomes possible uh, for the find out the solution. So, this method uh, utilizes a type curve, these are all called type curve. So, when your value comes, uh, you have to match the point and accordingly then other rest of the information can be obtained. So, uh, this is a uh, W u uh, versus u on the logarithmic paper and the rest are, uh, it is not uh, you know uh, semi logarithmic, please uh, uh, remember that one. Uh, so, this is important point here in earlier graphical methods which we have seen they are on semi logarithmic scale or on semi logarithmic graph. Now, the drawdown measurements that is H2 minus H made during the pumping test are also plotted on the logarithmic paper uh, versus which is versus the distance uh, acquired and divided by the time since pumping started that is r square upon t. So, earlier we uh, earlier we have used these two uh, axis, now we are using another. Uh, so, this becomes our another uh, x axis and then of course, the y axis. So, later the plot uh, the uh, plot of drawdown is superimposed over the type curve as uh, you are seeing here and the values of uh, w u u H2 minus H and R2 divided by T are selected at any uh, convenient point and as uh, substituted and that can be substituted in equation 1 and 2 which we have earlier discussed. So, when we uh, get these values substitute there and uh, we can have uh, our uh, hydraulic characteristics of uh, the aquifer which is under analysis or in consideration. So, later this uh, plot of drawdown is superimposed that is why this method is called superimposing uh, over the type curve and values of these are selected for convenient plot. You know a well penetrating a confined aquifer is pumped at a uniform rate of about 2500 cubic meter per day. So, you know long you know for very long time and uh, 
with a uniform discharge it is done, but this we are talking about in confined aquifer conditions. So, in which uh, we get all these uh, recordings that uh, T started that is 0 S and M then R square upon T that is uh, and this S storability in, in it is given here and uh, then R square um, upon T that is uh, Q, uh, square meter per minute T and other values are there plus their units are also there. R value is also in this example is given that is 60 meter. So, drawdown during the pumping period uh, uh, in confined aquifer conditions are measured in an observation well and uh, this uh, we have considered at uh, R that is the distance from the uh, pumping well and uh, uh, observation well is 60 meter away. So, uh, uh, that observations of T and S are listed as we are seeing in the table. So, using the uh, Thais method uh, we can determine the T that is transmissibility and storage coefficient or stativity of this uh, confined aquifer which is under consideration for which pumping has been done. Now, values of R square and T which is in square meter per minute are computed and appear in the right column of table 1. So, these are the values uh, which are given here and uh, values of uh, W u and uh, u from this uh, table 2 are plotted on another sheet of log paper of the same size and scale and a curve is drawn through the points. So, here like uh, matching points, so you can shift uh, uh, these two curves, one may be on the transparent sheet, another one on that and uh, there you have uh, try to fit uh, these uh, the values. So, the two sheets are superimposed that is why it is called superimposed method and shifted with coordinates axis parallel until the observational points coincides with the curve in, in the left figure. So, here what we are getting this is our match point as per uh, these two uh, you know plots are there and then we get these values of uh, here we get the values of uh, u r square t whatever uh, is uh, required or to be determined. Now, a convenient match point is selected with when with the w u that is uh, equal to 1.0 here in this example and u as uh, 1 multiply by 10 to power minus 2. So, u multiply by 10 to power minus 2. So, these two values we have taken and r square upon so that s is 0.18 meter and then r square upon t that is 150 square meter per minute. So, we get a value that is 2 lakhs 16,000 square meter per day. In this way we get the rate that is the withdrawal from the water. Now, this uh, from the following equations that is the equation number 4 mark here and uh, the storage duty as you have seen. Uh, so, that uh, we can uh, get the uh, now this equation T and this is uh, transmissibility and uh, we can substitute these values in this equation uh, the value which we have determined. So, we get a 1110 square meter per day. So, using the uh, this uh, following equation which is uh, as a storage equal to 4 T u upon r square t and substituting these values which we are getting now here like this one earlier we get 1 multiply by 10 to minus 2 and also we got this value about uh, uh, 2 lakh 16000 uh, square meter per day. So, when we put all these we get these values which is the about storativity and of course, uh, storativity as you know is a ratio quantity and will not have any uh, units here. So, with this uh, I uh, thank you very much and uh, this is uh, I would say here uh, that uh, uh, the, uh, the methods which we have discussed are little older methods, but they are very useful in the field investigations or when pumping is being done because all kinds of computation facilities might not be available in the field. 
So, uh, during that the these graphical methods becomes very very useful to determine all those things. Otherwise, uh, of course, nowadays lot of uh, softwares have all are available where the whatever the values which we determine we can determine in the field are fed into the software and uh, uh, the result of, um, uh, or the storability or transmissibility can be determined. Uh, but uh, when you are in the field, then it becomes challenging to use all these uh, you know uh, softwares. Another uh, thing is that one should also know uh, for better understanding about our aquifer characteristics or hydraulic characteristics of an aquifer that how these values are coming, how these uh, in what way these softwares are working and therefore, initially we have to understand theoretically and through graphical methods that how these values are determined storability and transmissibility. With this I thank you again. Thank you.